Good morning, dear friends, and happy Wednesday to you all. Um, Joe and Charlene, you get the prize for being on first this morning. Good to see you guys. Good morning, Janet and Stacy. Good to see you. And uh, good morning, Art and Connie and Rick, Susan, Lori, Jan and Larry, Bobby. Good to see everybody this morning. Um, and um, I love Bobby's Bobby's comment. Top of the morning, my family. <laughs> I agree. I think this is definitely a family. And so I, I love in the morning when you guys hop on. Good morning, Miss Gustina. I see that you're on with us as well. Uh, Miss Gustina is going to be cooking dinner for our midweek connection tonight. So big day for her. Good morning, Melissa and Richard. Good to see you guys on this morning as well. All right. So we got a great group and um, it's going to be a glorious day. I just can feel it. You know how you just wake up in the morning and um, you just you just feel good. Now, Melissa says she's feeling rushed this morning. I have those days too, but this morning is kind of gone really smoothly. So I'm hoping that that is indicative of the rest of the day and that it's a day of peace for all of us. Even if it's crazy and we're rushing around, um, hopefully it's a day of peace. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. We have a very short reading this morning um, in the scripture um, because we have a really uh, much longer reading tomorrow and I didn't want to split the reading up. So today we've just got a few like eight verses to read, um, but we've got our word for the day and the day and the word for the day is stop and it's number 34 in our little morning devotional book. And it starts with 2 Timothy 2.14, which says, Remind everyone about these things and command them in God's presence to stop fighting over words. Such arguments are useless and they can ruin those who hear them. The words you speak carry the power of life and death. See Proverbs 18.21. They are either fueled by God's heart or represent the enemy's desire for destruction. Arguing does not showcase the wisdom and heart of God, even if your stance seems righteous. Very little good comes from pushing your viewpoint upon people whose hearts are closed to hearing it. To force your opinion, even if you feel it matches God's, is to fight for your agenda. 
quarrels, and fights are most mostly self-serving and do not represent God's heart properly. God knows some personalities are more passionate, courageous, and confrontational. But when you genuinely speak the mind of Christ with the love of Christ, it is more likely that hearts will be softened, convicted, and changed. Ephesians 4.29 says to let no corrupt talk come from your mouth, but only what builds up others. The Holy Spirit wants to use your words to give grace to those who hear. Stop getting drawn into meaningless arguments and avoid talk that only serves to make you feel superior to others. Seek out what the Holy Spirit wants to say. He will not only give you words, but he will also help you say them. So our reflection says, what kind of words do I most want to stop coming from my mouth? All right. So I want to talk about this for just a second, because here we are like 13 days from the election. And right now, I think that particular event is fueling so much animosity between people because we're all very passionate about what we believe uh, needs to happen. And we all have our opinions. We all are going to go to the polls and vote, hopefully. Um, I voted yesterday, took my mom on Monday to vote. Um, it's, it's a really important election. Um, but there, the, the, there are so many things that get said that are hurtful. And it's just because people are very passionate about what they believe. Um, and so I think about a cousin of, of ours. And she's actually a, like a second cousin of mine. And she's been posting all sorts of political stuff. And it's it's one thing to post what you think and or to even if you want to put that out there, who you vote for, that's your business. Um, but she goes beyond that and she says hateful things about the other side and basically makes the people on the other side feel stupid in some ways if you let her do that. And it's so hurtful and hateful. And it's really been kind of a shock because we love this cousin with all our heart. I mean, like we go see her when we go to Michigan, my mom and I do, and we just adore her. But it's like, it's brought about a little division uh, because she's been so, you know, vocal about her opinions about this. So you know, I just, I want to say this, it's kind of taught me something about the fact that, you know, we can believe what we want to believe, whether it's politically or even spiritually, but if we condemn other people because they believe differently than we do, then we are actually doing what this very first paragraph says. It says we, that our words are either fueled by God's heart or represent the, the enemy's desire for destruction. And whether she knows it or not, it is sort of harming a relationship because we don't necessarily feel safe around her anymore. And so, and I said, I'm speaking me and my mom, you know, cause we've had conversations about it. Maybe I shouldn't speak for my mom. I should just speak for Shannon. I don't feel real safe around her because her view is totally opposite of mine and I have those thoughts of like, okay, I don't even know where you're coming from on this, but yet she would say the same thing about me. So what can we talk about besides politics? Because the reality is we all go out and we vote and we vote our conscience. Hopefully we are mindful of what scripture says and we align what um, the different politicians do and say with scripture and we vote our conscience on that. But what other things could we say instead of all of that? Um, could we say, could we, could we focus our, that, that our words are on being encouraging to one another, that we, uh, we do our best to lift people up instead of tearing them down, especially if they have a different opinion. Um, could it be that we we stay away from certain subjects? Um, could it be that we just, we show people God's love instead of just beating them over the head with what God says in his word, you know, and, or we pray scripture over them? 
instead of, you know, given our, our theological opinions about things. Um, you know, there's all different ways that we can approach this. So what sorts of words do we want to stop coming from our mouth? From my mouth in particular, um, I don't, I don't want there to be gossip. I don't want there to be, um, negative talk. Um, sometimes I struggle with that. Sometimes my brain just goes to, to, uh, you know, my husband says you go from zero to a hundred and you start looking at all of the, what could be problems instead of looking at what could be positive. And so, um, and so I'm working on that with God's help and hit, you know, his Holy spirit working in me, I'm working on that. And I think we're probably all works in progress. I think there's probably different things that we all could work on a little bit. Um, and what does that look like? And so, you know, even having a plan on, okay, today for the next hour, I'm going to speak only positive words. I'm not going to let the negative thoughts overwhelm me. And I'm definitely not going to say them out loud. Instead, I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to, you know, speak life into people's lives. You know, I'm going to speak positively. Um, I want to smile and encourage people. Um, I want to look for the good in the world instead of looking at what's wrong in the world. So what would it be for you? I'd love to know your comments. I'd love, you know, cause, cause sometimes when you guys comment about things, it's things that we haven't even thought about maybe. So, um, what, what kinds of things would you like to stop coming from your mouth or what kinds of things would you like to come from your mouth today? So let me pray for us. Father God, forgive us for opening our mouths and letting useless, hurtful, and selfish words spill out. Give us your tender heart in every conversation, especially the difficult ones, when we don't agree with someone. Holy Spirit, help us to demonstrate the character of Christ with the words of our mouth. May they be pleasing to you and give grace to those who hear. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So here's our declaration. I will stop you I will stop useless communication and speak words of grace. Okay, so um I'm looking at your your uh words. Sherry says she wants to to um not speak criticism. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it, Sherry? You know, because we just get into a habit of it. Um, or people have been really critical of us and that's what we've grown up knowing. Um, so, but the Holy Spirit can help us to be able to do that, to turn that around and to see the positive and to see what's good and what people are doing. Susan says judgmental comments. Amen to that too. Um, you know, um, guilty of that as well. Um, you know, we, we state our opinions about things and they're, they can come across as very judgmental and they can turn people off. And if people look at us as Christians, then, um, and we do that sort of thing, then it turns them away from Christianity. So our words truly are, um, truly are what, uh, a, a part of our witness. Connie says she just wants to speak words that are positive. And Connie does a really good job of this. You know, she's, she is a very positive and uplifting person um, and, and very encouraging. I, I feel very blessed to have her as my assistant and, and most of all my friend, because um, she's very encouraging and positive. All right. So here's our action for today. Fill your mouth with the opposite of the type of words that you want to stop. So, um, Sherry, you'll fill your words with encouragement and um and and seeing the best in people. Susan, same thing. Um, you're gonna you know fill your your mouth with um the the positive things in people's lives and and um and and maybe even just stopping those those judgmental uh, deal the judgmental words. Charlotte says jumping to conclusions before you know all the facts. Oh, that's a good one, Charlotte. Yes. You know, I'm sitting here going, yep, I do. I do all of those things. 
I do all of those things. Um, and so, uh, especially the jump into conclusions before knowing all the facts, you know, I assume a lot of things. I assume that I know what people are thinking. I assume that I know what their motives are when I absolutely don't. And I can't tell you how many times God has humbled me by me finding out that what I thought was not anywhere close to reality. So that's a good one. And then Melissa says positive thoughts about yourself. Oh, that's a good one too, Melissa, because we do sometimes tear ourselves down. You know, I I don't know if you're like this, um, but I you know I've certainly been like this where when people give me a compliment and just set, instead of just saying thank you, I always have to come back with, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. And it's always not, you know, like, oh, well, I didn't do this right. Or, oh, well, if only this would happen, you know, that sort of thing. Instead of just accepting it as a gift, because the other person that's giving those positive uh, affirmations, that is their gift to you. That's what makes them feel good, too. So, uh, and Connie says she's guilty of that as well. Uh, good morning, Vivian. Good to see you this morning. All right, so we've got some work to do, um, but we can do it because God's spirit is in us and he helps us do these things. So our action today, um, oh, I already did that, didn't I? Um, for example, if you want to stop criticizing others, intentionally compliment someone today. So these are this is some good action to put into place today. Um, some very, very good thoughts. So Lord, help us to be mindful today and, and help us to not fall into those old habits, but instead to rely upon your spirit to help us do what we cannot do for ourselves. That's obvious in the way that we've been programmed to, um, to speak. And so reprogram our mouths, Lord, and help it to be positive things that come from our mouth, encouraging words. And words that are filled with the light of your love. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right. So our very short reading today is from Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And today, this is on page 216 in the Chronological Bible. And it's a section called Purification After Childbirth. And for those of you who hopped on later, it's very short today because we have a much longer um, section to read tomorrow and it would have been too long to do both sections. So we're just going to keep it short today and then do a little bit longer tomorrow or kind of more normal. All right. And Lori says, love others through their anger. Amen to that. That's hard to do, isn't it, Lori? It is it's really hard to do because... Um, when someone is lashing out of at us or they're being unkind to us, the natural human reaction is to want to do it back. You know, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but that's not what God's called us to do. And that's certainly not what Jesus did. Jesus um, loved others through their anger, through their resentment, through their uh, wicked plans. He just loved them all the way to the cross. And he does the same for us. All right. So Leviticus chapter 12, verse one, the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is unclean during her menstrual period. On the eighth day, the boy's foreskin must be circumcised. After waiting 30 days, she will be purified from the bleeding of childbirth. During this time of purification, she must not touch anything that is set apart as holy, and she must not enter the sanctuary until her time of purification is over. If a woman gives birth to a daughter, she will be, be ceremonially unclean for two weeks, just as she is unclean during her menstrual period. After waiting 66 days, she will be purified from the bleeding of childbirth. When the time of purification is completed for either a son or a daughter, the woman must bring a one-year-old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or turtle dove for a purification process. She must bring her offerings to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. 
The priest will then present them to the Lord to purify her. And then she will be ceremonially clean after her bleeding at childbirth. These are the instructions for a woman after the birth of a son or a daughter. If a woman cannot afford to bring a lamb, she must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. One will be for the burnt offering and the other for the purification offering. The priest will sacrifice them to purify her and she will be ceremonially clean. All right, so I don't really understand. I'll ha I'd have to do some more research to understand why the time difference, um, why a woman would become um, able to be purified um, almost, you know, in half the time if she had a son versus if she had a daughter. But one of the things that I was very interested to find out um, in just reading the little footnote in the bottom of my Bible, and maybe you have that footnote as well if you're using the same particular Bible that I am, um, is it talked about, well, this was actually a positive thing. You know, sometimes we think about uh, punishment, or at least I do, is like, well, why if a woman, if this is like part of what a woman does is give birth, then why would she not be able to go to the temple and worship? Because she's done a good thing. But um, they they brought out a different point that I thought was much more positive and made a lot of sense. And that was that this would give the woman the time that she needed with her baby to, you know, become accustomed to uh, life with that child, to be able to take care of the baby instead of having to worry about finding the offerings to bring and bringing those and, and um, going to the temple. This would be kind of like maternity leave is, is kind of how I see it. And so it's actually a gift rather than an exclusion. And um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but, you know, I've always kind of looked at this as an exclusion and like, well, why are they doing that? Um, and then the same thing, even with the menstrual period, you know, it's like um, any of us who have gone through that, we know we don't really want to go anywhere when we're going through that process. Um, you know, we don't feel good and it's just a miserable time. And so it's actually a gift to have to stay away. Because, um, I mean, we can certainly worship God from where we are. Um, we can pray. We can do all of those things. Although, you know, things were a little bit different back then. I mean, your the priest went to the Lord on behalf of the people. But but there was specific rules. and I, And so I'm looking at this as truly a gift that God gave to the women. They had done this great thing of bringing a new life into the world. And now, because they didn't have to, to do these other things that others in the community did, they had time to bond with their baby. They had time to uh, breastfeed and, and to do all of those things as the baby um, got a little bit older. You know, we know a lot of things happen to babies early on. And so, you know, this would just be an opportunity for them to be able to tend to the baby. So... I don't know if you found that interesting or not, but I, I did. I thought that was um, a, a pretty cool deal because I'd never thought of it. I thought of it more as exclusion and, you know, as women being, as women being less than, but they're not, they're really being elevated in some ways, which is typical of the way God is. The world may diminish the role of women, but, um, but God doesn't and never has. Um, you know, he's, he's always affirming women and lifting them up. So anyway, I thought that was interesting and maybe, maybe you did as well. So as I think about that in my own life, I think about, um, you know, what, what kind of grace does God give us, um, when we're sick, for example, um, you know, I, I think about the fact that, you know, when we're ill, that there's a lot of people who give us grace, you know, we're able to, to stay home and take care of ourselves and all of that. It kind of makes me feel better about, um, the fact that it's okay to take care of ourselves. And in this particular sense, 
There was not going to be any pressure from anybody to get to the temple or for them to do anything else because these rules were in place for them. So I look at it as a gift. All right, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. And um, we we just want to continue our prayers. I, I want to pray for Lori. Um, and she's got some things going on. Um, I'm not going to get specific about it, but we want to lift Lori up in our prayers. Um, and then um, we want to definitely continue to pray for Debbie and Roger as they are moving. And that's such an exhausting process. And then also for Debbie's um, ministry. We want to continue to pray for our churches. Um, we have a big rummage sale this week, and I have not been a whole lot of help at all with the rummage sale. That's kind of not my thing. Um, I, I don't ever know how to price things. I don't know, I, you know, it's, it's, um, and I've got 5,000 other things to do. So I'm not much help there, but I will tell you, I have been praying, praying, praying for this event. And especially for those who are working so hard, Charlotte and Linda and Peggy, um, Connie, um, just different ones on, that are right here on the morning devotional that have been working so hard and are tired. So I'm just praying for you guys to have strength and um, for your weariness to turn into um, into uh, just a positive energy um, that we can, you know, we're going to be able to, to have a whole bunch of people from the community, hopefully, that will come to this sale. And, um, and so uh, we want to, we just want to, uh, we want to uh, be very positive and, um, and, and, and uh, welcome people. So uh, anyway, just praying for that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious heavenly father, we praise you and thank you for your presence with us. We thank you that your spirit guides our tongues, our minds, our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you will be in every word that we speak. May our words be positive and encouraging. May they never tear people down because you call us to be different from that. I pray, Lord, that your spirit moves in our hearts and in our lives today and that we see visible signs of your presence, that we see you working, that we are encouraged by you through a variety of, of different avenues. Thank you, Lord, for positive comments that come through and encouragement that comes from friends and family. I thank you, Lord, that we get to be part of this community and love each other and lift each other up um, in our various circumstances. I pray today, Lord, for all of those that are working on the rummage sale. And in the days to come when this it, this process is so exhausting, I pray, Lord, for that energy to uh, and the excitement of, of uh, all of this. And I pray, Lord, that you will bless, bless this event so that, that the funds that are raised for open arms, sober living um, are plenty. And I pray, Lord, that you will... Um, Help us to, to, to have peace in the midst of, of the storm. I pray, Lord, that you will be with Lori today and that you will work in her heart and in her family situation. Keep her positive, Lord. She's just come back from a spiritual retreat and then she immediately has the attack of the enemy. Help her to resist that, to not even look at what the enemy is doing and saying and instead to continue to look to you. And Father, I pray that you will be with Melissa as she continues that interview process. I pray, Lord, that you will be with Debbie and Roger as they are moving. I pray that you will work in their their bodies and their hearts and, and um, in this new place that they are going. I pray, Lord, that you will expand Debbie's territory and you will bless her ministry, that she may touch the lives of women in a positive way. I pray today for those who are ill, those who are struggling with health issues. I pray for my mama who fell last week and who's got some bruises and bumps and swelling and all of those things, some a hurt foot. I just pray, Lord, that you will heal her body. And I pray for those who are struggling with cancer, for Suzanne and Cherie, for John and Lauren. I pray, Lord, for those who are, who are battling addictions. 
I pray, Lord, that you will um, just give them strength to resist and that they will resist it not by their own efforts, but by you working through them. And I pray, Lord, that they will draw closer to you. I pray, Lord, that you will work in our finances and in our families and in our churches and that you will expand our territory and bless us so that we can be a blessing to you. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as I was praying, um, I was, uh, God brought to mind somebody else that I need to, I need for us to add to our prayer list. And that's Jennifer Hibner. And she lost her dad. Uh, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before. Um, and so we want to pray for her. Um, having lost my dad recently, I know that pain. So, um, we want to lift her up. All right. In the light of the morning, Lord, we glorify your name. May the mystery of your incarnation shine through the complexities of this day so that in all we do, your name might be praised. Amen. And welcome back, Amy. I see you just landed in Fort Worth. We're, we hope you had a great trip. And what a faithful person to just hop on the morning devotional when you've just gotten back into town. That's awesome. All right. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing right back here in the morning. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Hope to see those of you here in this area at the Midweek Connection tonight and the rest of you I'll see in the morning. Love you guys. Have a great day.